in this video we will do the remaining part of our road loads calculation so so far we have seen what are what are the road loads or resistive forces which are acting on a vehicle we have seen where do they come we have we have derived the equations so now moving on we have considered the vehicle tata nexon ev for our calculations and uh, these are the specifications of tata nexon ev now we have already calculated the total tractive force which is the sum of all of the resistive forces which are acting on the vehicle and we have got 6814 newton at 50 km per hour now the next part is the tractive torque the torque is what that moves the vehicle the various gears and transmission are there to help the our prime mover or the our engine to do some little work so that the torque gets multiplied and uh, the the prime mover or the motor don't have to work very hard to generate so much of torque so the formula for tractive torque is tractive force multiplied by the tire radius now with the tractive forces now very familiar to us uh, that by definition it is the sum of all of the resistive forces which are acting on the vehicle which includes aerodynamic drag rolling resistance gradient resistance and the acceleration forces now the tire radius part is something new so where do we get the tire radius we get the tire radius from the tire size now if you remember in the beginning of the specification sheet of tata nexon we have seen that the tire size it has is r16 215/60 lrr now what does that this mean so what is the meaning of r what 16 stands for and what is the full form of lrr we are going to see that in a while so to give a basic structure of what we will be looking at this is the basic tire the it has the rim diameter which you can see from here and there is a ex external tire diameter diameter now in order to get the tire radius we have to find this external diameter or the external radius of the tire now how do we get this so the specification of the tire is uh, uh, is this the r16 21560 lrr so the first one is the radial structure now the tires are made up of two types of structure one is radial and one is cross ply now the radial one is what basically used in the passenger vehicles or any uh, light vehicles and the cross plies are the used in heavy vehicles say the trucks so the for now you can understand that radials are used in cars while the cross ply or the bias ply tires are used in heavy vehicles now the second initial after the r is the 16 now what does the 16 mean is the rim diameter here you can see the rim diameter so that's the size of the wheel so the 16 is given in inches now following that we have 215 this is the sectional width and this is given in mm so now what is sectional width this is the width of the tire so uh, maybe you will you are you will be able to understand from this this is the sectional width of the tire so the spot now the vehicle has the radial structure it has a rim diameter of 16 inches and a sectional width or the width of the tire is 215 mm now the next one the 60 is the aspect ratio now what aspect ratio is aspect ratio is the ratio between section height of the tire and the section width so uh, the section height uh, here you can deduce that the section height and the section width the ratio of this is what aspect ratio is so the 60 indicates that the aspect ratio for this particular tire is 60% and now following the lrr this lrr stands for the low rolling resistance because the nexon is an electric vehicle so the uh, the road loads or the rolling resistance loads are very significant so that from the tire itself the tire manufacturer tries to keep the rolling resistance as low as possible that's why this initials low rolling resistance now the moving on to the next slide uh, we have to find the sectional height because 
from the specification we don't directly have the section height of the tire so we have to do some calculations and fiddle around this formula so as i said the aspect ratio is the ratio between section height and width now rearranging the formula we get the section height to be aspect ratio multiplied by the section width divided by 100 now putting the values which is 16 to be the 60 aspect ratio is to be the 60 percent and the sectional width is to be 215 mm putting these values here we get the section height to be 129 mm and now in order to find the tire radius we have to add the rim radius and the section height to it now we have already got the section height to be 129 now the rim radius will be 16 16 is the 16 inch which we uh, have seen from the tire specification multiplied by 25.4 this needs uh, we need to do this so we convert that inches into millimeters and then it needs to be divided by 2 because the 16 is the diameter not the radius so we will divide this again by 2 and uh, in, we get the tire radius to be 332.2 mm and uh, since all of the calculations are, we have done using meter so we have to convert that mm into meter again so the tire radius is 0 0.332 meter and uh, we will use this tire radius to calculate the tractive torque so now the equation or the formula is very simple now uh, we will multiply the tractive force into tire radius and we get the tractive torque which is 2262.553 newton meter this is a very huge number uh, but we have a gearbox also so the torque requirement from the motor itself is very low compared to what the what actually the vehicle requires on tires so we will see that later now we will move to the power calculations so the power required to so we need some power to overcome all of the different resistive forces we will see one by one the first one is aerodynamic drag the power required to overcome the aerodynamic drag will be the aerodynamic drag force multiplied by the velocity of the vehicle now the velocity of the vehicle which we have considered for calculation is 50 km per hour which is 13.889 meter per second and we will simply multiply this velocity into the drag force and we get the power required to overcome aerodynamic drag is 1122.056 watts similarly now we will do the calculation for rolling resistance and gradient resistances now this formula is again it's very simple rolling resistance force multiplied by the velocity of the vehicle now equating that we get the power required to overcome rolling resistance and similarly again the gradient resistance force multiplied by the velocity will give us the power required to overcome the gradient resistance now as just like the beginning uh, the acceleration is something which is very different from other road loads so the power required for acceleration is that the it will not have the same formula so we have to first reduce the formula to calculate the power required for acceleration now we will start with the rearranging the first equation of motion to find the acceleration this is similar to what we have did for the force required or the force required to overcome the acceleration or the acceleration force now just like before we have assumed the initial velocity to be zero so the u part will cancel out and we will have acceleration is equal to velocity upon time now to find the acceleration distance we will use the second equation of motion now since again the velo initial velocity will be zero so the equation becomes s is equal to half times acceleration times the time period square or the time square now the work is work done is given by the product of force into displacement now the force is again defined as the product of mass and acceleration so when we put these both things in the above equation we get the work done to be the product of mass 
multiplied by acceleration multiplied by displacement now we have already derived equation for acceleration and dis displacements using the equation of motions and the initial velocity we assume to be zero so now the whole equation of work done becomes half multiplied by mass multiplied by the velocity square or v square now in order to find the average acceleration power we have to divide the work done by the time period so the equation follows as it is and the at the end we will get the average acceleration power to be half times the force required to overcome acceleration or uh, the acceleration force multiplied by the velocity and uh, solving putting on the values and solving the equation we get the average power to be 34725 watts now this is all the average acceleration power because the work done during the time period is being averaged out so we have to calculate the peak acceleration power for that also so the peak acceleration is basically the force of the half part from the average acceleration power will now get removed so it's it is the mass times velocity square divided by the time and which translates to the force the acceleration force multiplied by the velocity now the peak X, uh, now the peak acceleration power which we require will be 69,450 watts. Now the total power required to overcome all of the roads will simply be the sum of all of the powers which we calculated and putting on the values we get the total power to be 59,931 watts or 59.93 kilowatts. Now this is the average total power we will also calculate for the peak power so the peak total power we will we have to produce is about 94.65 kilowatts now uh, again so the previous calculation we were done using only single velocity which is 50 kilometers per hour solving for different velocities will give us this power figures and the, this these are the numbers which we have got using 50 kmph mark and uh, i have already calculated for different set of velocities to sort of see the trend out now how this works now from this table only you can see as the velocity is increasing the power required is also increasing but uh, with a different trends now when we put this into a chart we, we are able to see how the trend is so the aerodynamic power is slightly increasing the rolling resistance is almost linear and then the gradient force the, uh, the gradient power is increasing as the speed is increasing but the very dominant force or the very dominant power requirement is the for the acceleration part now why this is happening is because we are sprinting from 0 to 100 uh, km per hour so here the acceleration is very high and that too we are doing within 10 seconds so that's why here the acceleration power is very dominant and uh, it is the highest requirement here and uh, the acceleration power line also shows that how the acceleration is going so it is almost linear so as we are increasing the speed we are increasing the acceleration too 